Hello everybody and welcome back to our little channel. Right, today's video you will have seen from the thumbnail is predominantly talking about this awning. I'm going to show you setup times. I'm going to talk about pros and cons as to, uh, and as to why I chose that specific one. But if I just did that, it'd be a really short video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk, quickly walk around the Land Rover and tell you and show you why I'm changing it and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because I've had a few comments, a few DMs, just asking, well, well it looks good the way it is. What are you doing? Why, why are you doing it? Why, why are you wasting your money? Blah, blah, blah. So uh, I'll start with that and then we'll move on to the awning at the end of the video. So guys, I'm filming this freehand, so excuse the shaky footage. Uh, but we'll start at the back of the Land Rover and I'll show you why the back door needs replacing. So just there, you can see where it's all starting to corrode. And indeed, just here, the paint is hanging off. You can see that moving there. Oh, and I just broke a bit. There you go. So it definitely, definitely needs a back door. So I'm going to replace the back door with a, an uprated galvanised version and uh, hopefully eliminate that from happening again anytime soon. We'll move around to the side and the same is happening just here. So the weak part of the Land Rovers, in my opinion, is they've got a steel frame with an aluminium skin. And where the steel frame starts rusting, it causes the aluminium to oxidise and blow out, which is what's happening here. Uh, the passenger side door, this is the front passenger side door I'm going for. Uh, the door top is absolutely rotting out just there. So that's probably going to be something I do sooner rather than later. I mean, look at this. Um, and as I say, usually this is steel here. If I had a magnet, I'd show you. And it's an, an aluminium skin on the outside. So where this starts rusting, just there, can you see that where my thumb is? It'll cause it to blow out on the other side. Um, it's never intended to have a snorkel, but somebody screwed a snorkel to the side of it and there's no hole for the, uh, for the snorkel to go through. So that's going to have to be changed. Driver's side is a lot better. I say a lot better, not as bad. I mean, it's still a little bit corroded just at the bottom there, excuse my shadow, and just there starting to go. So uh, I figured five new doors are in order just to eliminate that. And as I say, I'm going for the galvanized uprated doors. This window here is the old style window with bird shit all over it as usual. But you can see, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see inside, but it's got little moss and plants growing on the inside. But if I move along to here, you can see how perished and knackered those runners have become. Indeed, somebody's tried to seal it just there. So I'm going to replace that whole window with a more modern one, which in fact, if I open up the Land Rover driver's door this time, excuse the mess in the car, there's one sat just there see it just wrapped in tape so that is ready to go on so i hope that clears up a little bit why i'm going to be uh, replacing five panels essentially five of the biggest panels the doors um, and because i'm replacing them i thought well i may as well just change the color because i'm going to be spraying five doors anyway so what's what's the rest i mean the roof's staying black bonnet's probably going to go black and uh, the rest of the land rover is going to go a different color that i'm i'm keeping quite close to my chest at the moment but um, yeah, I've had a lot of comments on a lot of people liking this bronzy orange colour. And it is a really nice colour, it is. Uh, I completely agree with you, just I want to go just slightly different. Slightly a bit more unique, I think. Right, onto the feature of the video. I'm going to set up the awning. I'm going to set it up twice for you. The first setup, somebody's going to time it, I guarantee it, and put down in the comments below how many seconds it took to set it up. I have timed myself in the past, uh, and I, I'm thereabouts. I know it's under a minute to set it up, which is one of the reasons I went for this. But then I'll show you exactly how to do it in the second setup. I'll go frame by frame, I'll use the action cam, and I'll show you exactly what is entailed, which isn't much, to be honest. But uh, yeah, let me move the camera back, and I'll show you exactly what's going on. So hopefully that angle works for you. I've got my strap, which is the only external piece of equipment needed for this one. So uh, yeah, start that clock. I'll pop this in my pocket and let's go. Undo the zip, nice and easy. There's two Velcro straps that cause it to unfold. We grab this, 
and you walk it round. I'm going to go out of shot for a few seconds while I attach my strap. I'm just attaching the strap to the roof rack, which I'll show you in detail in a second. Strap goes through this little, uh, whatever it's called, clamp, I suppose. You pull your strap tight. Done. How long was that? So it's a completely freestanding awning. Uh, one of my friends came up last week when I just freshly fitted it and I did this and he said, I don't believe you're doing that on that awning. So uh, yeah, you can just grab it from here and do some pull-ups. Feet are completely off the floor. So uh, yeah, it's completely freestanding. Absolutely amazing piece of kit. So guys, that is uh, basically the setup and how it looks. And I'll talk about a few pros and cons. Pros, build quality, absolutely amazing build quality. Setup time, brilliant, brilliant setup time. The materials they've used are brilliant. Uh, marine grade stainless, they've used uh, some canvas that doesn't rot and doesn't go mouldy, uh, as easy as, as, as cheaper awnings. Um, also the company's reputation, they've got a really good reputation, which kind of makes you gravitate towards that. Uh, a couple of cons, price, definitely it's one of the most expensive awnings on the market, as far as I'm aware anyway. Um, but you kind of understand why when we talk about the build quality and everything else. But still, price was a little bit ouchy. Um, and actually fitting it, I don't think it's designed for a tubular roof rack, uh, which is where I struggled. But we've managed to get it on. It, it's, it's, I mean, it's sturdy enough. You can grab it and you can, you can literally, I'm not sure you can see that because my angle's not there, but you can shake the Land Rover with it. It's going nowhere. So uh, yeah, absolutely stunning, stunning bit of kit. But uh, yeah, they're basically the only two cons I can think of. Um, I'm sure after a year of using it, some other cons may come up. But until then, I'm not going to be able to tell you. This is just a, an initial uh, opinion and review video, if you like, of, uh, of this awning. Right, what I'll do now is I'll quickly grab the action cam and I'll walk you around a complete setup and I'll show you uh, in finer detail what it's all about. So everybody, we'll start around the driver's side of the Land Rover with the slow setup. This is the strap you get. Quickly wang it down and at one of the ends, you've got a loop just there. Hope you can see that. So all I do is I go onto this bar just here, thread it through itself, pull it tight, and then that's ready to accept the clamp or when you bring it round, which I'll show you in a second. But I'll give you a quick close-up of that. There you go, no frills, just like that. So we'll go round to the passenger side. And it's really, really simple. This is even going to take about a minute doing it for the camera. Two zippers just here. I'm told they're YKK zippers, but I haven't checked. Not something that really bothers me, to be fair. And uh, you just unzip it. Simple as. Once your zip's undone, you can push this flap over the top. And even climb up onto the rock slider and do it. I didn't do this last time, but I was going for speed. It's not that important. There you go, that's that open. And then we've got two Velcro straps. Undo one bit. Undo the second bit. And it concertinas out just like that. Grab this just here, can you see that? And you walk it round. I'm gonna take you for a walk with me. Nice and simple. Walk it right the way round. And you've got one of these, uh, can you see that? Is that gonna focus? One of these weird spring-loaded clamps on here, which the former strap that we put on this side just goes through. backside, poke it through and pull it tight. 
And that, my dear friends, is an awning just set up. So guys, as you could see, I was uh, actually going slow and showing you how to do it and it probably took just over a minute just then. Uh, absolutely fantastic bit of kit. Absolutely love it to bits. Uh, I am waiting for the sides to come into stock in the UK because uh, nobody's got the sides for it. So if the Bush company do actually watch this and they want to send me some sides, hit me up in the comments below or DM me and uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take a set. Uh, I did actually pay for this. Uh, I didn't get any discount or anything. This is bought out of my own money. Um, and indeed, I've done it in the wrong order. I mean, I've still got to paint my roof, so it's all got to come off as it has the roof rack. But um, I was just excited and eager just to get it started. As you can imagine, uh, I want to get the project moving and underway quite quickly. And uh, hopefully later this month, we're in April now, there's going to be a few more alterations to the Land Rover and the project is going to start moving quite quick now. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave that video there for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Just a quick little review, if you want, of the uh, Bush Company 270 XT, not the Max. All right, guys, until next week, you all take care.